Does the idea of having to sell yourself for the upcoming job interview make you cringe? You are not alone. In today's video, we're going to analyze what selling yourself truly means and what you can do to help yourself build interview confidence very quickly. Welcome to my channel. Thanks for being here. I'm Anna, I'm a career coach, and in my videos I talk about how to get you hired for that fantastic job you want and of course deserve. I work with professionals every single day. Some of them are actively job searching, some of them are just looking for better opportunities for their future and for their professional development. Regardless of their level of expertise and their level of experience in a certain field, everybody struggles with the idea of having to sell yourself to prospective employers. The truth is, most of us don't really know what that means because it either feels like now it's time to start bragging about yourself or it means that you have to follow a certain specific formula or framework to help you know what that actually looks like when you have to sell yourself. And in most cases, it feels like an impossible task to do because in your eyes, you're simply doing your job. Your job feels so normal and routine that you don't really know what selling yourself means in this context. I coach people for their upcoming job interviews and I know that everybody, every single person has something valuable and unique to offer. And the main opportunity here is for you to analyze and understand what that is and learn how to communicate that in the language that employers truly understand. So what does selling yourself actually mean? It doesn't mean that you have to start bragging. It doesn't mean that you have to start using fancy adjectives as in, I'm a great negotiator, I'm detail-oriented, I'm the best at what I do. Selling yourself actually comes from understanding how to communicate what you're good at. And here's a three-step formula of how you can do that. Step one, start with what you did as part of your job. A very simple question, don't overthink it. Simply list the most important things that took most of your time in terms of the work that you were doing. Those could be the simplest task because most often they're going to feel super normal and routine in your case because they do them so often and so regularly. Step two is start answering the question how you did those things. When it comes to uh, describing that type of context, this is about understanding which tools or applications or instruments you were using to complete that task. Who were the people that you were collaborating with? Um, could be the steps of the process that you had to follow. Anything, any additional information that helps people understand how you actually approached that task that you mentioned as step one. And finally, the most important step, step number three. Talk about the value that that has created. What is value? Value is results, outcomes, specific changes, improvements. A lot of the times people tell me, but I didn't generate any big improvements. I was simply doing my job. The truth is the improvements were actually there. The easiest way to notice those improvements is to compare the before and after. Before means the time when you joined the company and started doing your job. How were things then? What were the processes like? What was missing? What was there? How efficient was everything? How efficient was your team? The after meaning by the time you are either here today or by the time you left the organization, what changes were there? Even if that change was not the direct result of your efforts alone, so maybe it was a team thing, still, were there any big improvements that you were part of? That's the easiest way to start noticing the difference and start understanding how that chain of events unfolded in terms of your contribution to the overall results for the business, for the team, for the department, for, for the office, or even just for yourself and your scope of responsibility. By using these three steps, you're going to arrive to different examples from your work experience that could sound something like this. I recommended a new client follow-up strategy after analyzing two years worth of sales data and collecting information from 50 largest customer accounts, which boosted sales by over 25% within the first year. 
Or you could say something like this. I organize the order delivery system by optimizing storage across a 10,000 square foot warehouse facility and optimizing the workflow amongst the team of six warehouse employees, which cut the delivery time in half. Do these examples sound like bragging? No, they don't. Because this is a very natural and authentic way to communicate what you did, how you did it, and what kind of result that helped create which is, in essence, selling yourself. So it's not about bragging, it's not about fancy buzzwords. It's simply about following a structure that helps other people, the interviewer, the hiring manager, the recruiter, whoever, understand what is unique and special about how you approach your work. The problem is that most people stop at, you know, listing what they did. And that's why most resumes today look like a job description. But what actually sells you and what convinces the employer that they want to reach out and potentially explore the opportunity of hiring you and partnering with you is not what you did. There could be hundreds, if not thousands of people who also did those same things and they can say the exact, they can list the exact same responsibilities. What attracts employers to you is how you did what you did and the value that that has created. That's what selling yourself truly means. So if you're someone who wants to appear and feel more confident for your upcoming job interview, I'm going to tell you a secret. Interview confidence is not an abstract concept that some people are just born with. Interview confidence is a skill. And as like any other skill, it comes with practice. So if you start applying these three-step formula to your experience, to your professional background, and then you start practicing talking about that out loud to other people, potentially even recording yourself on video and re-watching that video afterwards, you're going to discover exactly the weaknesses that you need to work on, but also you'll realize how convincing you can sound by just being yourself which is the beauty of gaining interview confidence. If you enjoyed today's video and found it helpful, don't forget to hit thumbs up and share it with a job searching friend to help them nail their upcoming job interview. If you want to get regular tips for your personal and professional development, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notifications bell so that we could stay in touch.